Good evening, Air of Carthage here, jumping into some more Total War Warhammer online battles. This one's going to be played as Smokey. He's playing as the Vampire Counts. He's the one that submitted this to me. And uh, I believe he has a channel of his own. I believe it's Theocles. Um, yeah, Theocles of Rome or something. I'll try and link to it if I can find it, but I'm pretty sure he does have a YouTube channel. He makes content. If you see the link there, go check it out. It's always worth checking folks out. we got a great community, honestly, in Total War. There's a ton of content. And a lot of content creators, each having a unique style. So, let's see, he's got some fell bats. It looks like um, can't tell if this is it should list it as Manfred if it is. No, just a vampire lord. He's got a vampire lord on a hell steed, Karen wraiths um, on both flanks, main line of grave guard, standard variety, backed up by cryptors, and it looks like some zombies. Might as well throw some cheap money into zombies. One blood knight. Very powerful cavalry up against the green skins who are fielding quite a lot of cavalry here. Four orc boar boy biggins and an orc war boss out here. And then hang on, three biggins and a war boss and a goblin hero on a spider with potions. The war boss has potions as well. We got two black orcs, two orc boys, and giants being fielded against the vampires. Definitely a solid pick versus the vampires. Got a Night Goblin Shaman here for the uh, Greenskins. Would have liked to have seen um, a Goblin Big, or a uh, Lure of the Big Wah here. Um, can be a lot more effective versus the Vampires. The Foot of Gork being able to stomp out Ethereal units, which get used pretty heavily by Vampires. So, would definitely prefer to have seen the Big Wah. Little Wah, though, does have some great buffs for buffing up infantry, but... In the current state, if these Orc Boys and Black Orcs engage a line of Graveguard backed up by Cryptors, they will die. Um, he's going to want to get the Giants into combat first and let them start dishing damage and then move from there. If, uh, also, if the Orcs get a little bit too hasty over here with their uh, Boar Boy Biggins, I think they're going to regret that. Just zombies over here, so that, they're not even worth charging. Fell bats can also be a pain in the butt by interrupting cavalry charges, so a great pick for a vampire counts player. They can interrupt wizards, they can chase off routing units. Fell bats are definitely a very useful unit, and some people do seem to ignore them. Check out this haunted shack here in the middle of the uh, middle of the thing. What has it got? Like a corpse in the yard? Looking very nice. Wow. So the vampire counts wizard took a pretty nasty shot there from the uh, lore of Little Wa. But I'm assuming they could use Invocation in the heck or just get out of range. This uh, particular character doesn't regenerate. So let's kind of see how this goes. Vampire Count definitely has the uh, hill advantage and it's not looking to get rid of that at the moment. Let's see, Fell Bat's ready to intercept charges on the cavalry. Definitely a nice move. The Cairn Race would uh, deal some pretty significant damage to the cavalry if they could get in without being charged. Uh, the Giants, like I said, they're going to be a little bit different to deal with. There's not a great way for them to be dealt with. I mean, the Blood Knights could probably do significant damage to a Giant, but for all I know, the, the Blood Knights might get killed by it too. The Giant deals a pretty significant amount of armor-piercing damage, I believe. Let's fast forward till we get here. Okay, looks like we got green skins moving up towards the hill. Crypt Horrors moving towards the flank with the Cavalry. That's probably not a bad plan. But the, uh, the Cavalry does have a bonus versus large, so I have to be careful with the Crypt Horrors. Okay, Fell Bat's going to interrupt the charge as expected. So, Boar Boy's kind of being chased off. So, again, you can see the Fell Bats there being useful. They take uh, a lot more damage than they dealt, but they prevented the charge there. It looks like whenever the battle does happen, it's going to be fairly quick. It's only seven and a half minutes left. Oh, here comes another nasty shot for the uh, Vampire Wizard. Wow. Another hit. Pretty decent shot. Vampire Wizard's down to half. Greenskin players using up some of their uh, magic, though. Magic's precious. Cairn Wraith's being sent in first. Zombies. Looks like Graveguard will back him up. So the, the Giant is going to... He doesn't cause magical damage, so the Karen race will at least be resisting, but I mean, they are taking some massive damage from the giant. Here comes another shot at the wizard. Wizard's on the move, so it might miss. No, it does not miss. A solid hit. So right now, everything's going pretty well for the uh, shaman there in the little wall. The 
center, the Graveguard have now pinned down the Black Orcs. They ought to do decent-ish here, but with the Giant supporting, that's going to be rough. We got an Invocation into Heck, healing the Wizard, so good call. That's wasting a lot of magic from the, uh, the Greenskins, because they fired it all off at the Wizard, and then the Wizard heals. Here comes another shot at the Wizard. Another hit, but the Nehek had saved him. The Giant takes some damage from the uh, Blood Knights, but the Blood Knights taking damage as well. Looks like they're going to roll around for another charge on the Giant. I think the Blood Knights are going to be the best bet for taking out the Giants. Yeah, the Giant is taking significant damage from the Blood Knights. The Blood Knights are taking significant damage from the Giant. That is going to be a pain to deal with. But now the Blood Knights are really damaging the Giant pretty quickly, as long as they can hang in there. Let's see, over here, the Boar Boys are being engaged by Cairn Wraiths and Crypt Horrors and Zombies, so it's going to be a rough fight for the um, Boar Boys. This one gets completely interrupted by Fell Bats. Let's just kind of take a look at things. The Giant over here, still trying to pound away at the Cairn Wraiths. It's going to take another charge from the um, Blood Knights. So they ought to be able to cause some pretty significant charge damage, but they are also taking a nasty hit there. I believe they can finish off the Giant. Cryptors in the center are going down. The Giant is causing huge damage to the Vampires. Vampire Wizard is alive. Greenskin's putting up a nice fight here. Giants are always a good pick versus the Vampires in my opinion. It's harder for the Vampires to kill them than it is for the Greenskin player to play poorly with them. So this Giant's probably going to eat it. The cycle charges of the uh, Blood Knights paying dividends there, and now they have to try and take down the other Giant. But he is gone. They should be able to hunt down and destroy the Sneaky Stabbing being cast here. So the Greenskin units getting some pretty serious melee buffs right now. Zombies in here, tanking damage, Graveguard, but the, the Orc Cavalry gets wrapped up. The Goblin here trying to heal up his wounds. Let's we'll see what happens. We got Fell Bats, we still have Blood Knights. This Giant's going to get run down and killed. The Wizard for the Vampire is still just kind of sitting away from the fight. The Goblin Shaman is in combat. I don't know if he's out of magic. Yeah, the Giant's about to drop. He's dead. So one more giant left in combat. If they can break the leadership of the giant, that's one of the easiest ways to try and get rid of them. The vampires now have the green skin surrounded. The balance bar could come into effect. There's an orc war boss who's in here, still in great shape because of the healing potions. But the vampire wizard who's been getting shot at and pushed away, I think still has something to add to the fight. We'll see. Potion of Foolhardiness, trying to make the uh, the Goblin Big Boss unbreakable. Definitely a good pick on that potion, because it is pretty easy to break their leadership. Now the Potion of Healing being used. So the Goblin Big Boss going to pull himself back into the fight. Blood Knight's making a rear charge here, and they are getting substantial kills from it. The Night Goblin Shaman is uh, shaken. The Blood Knights got hit with an invocation to heck, so that's what I said. When this wizard, I said he had something to add to the battle, that was a great play right there by the vampires, bringing back the Blood Knights. And that's the power of the Necromancer and the lore of the vampires right there. The lore of death used to be everything because of uh, the uh, fate of Buna and Spirit Leech, but yeah, you're going to see some painful damage being inflicted by the Blood Knights. The Giants now surrounded. An invocation of Nehek can keep the Blood Knights alive, basically. So, huge, huge breakthrough for the Vampire at this point. So they can basically bog the Giant down and cause a lot of damage. And if the War Boss or the Goblin Big Boss start to lose, they're going to be in rough shape. And the Big Boss, I believe, is out of healing potions. The War Boss has probably used one. Yeah, that, that invocation into heck on these uh, Blood Knights was absolutely brilliant. If the Vampires have it left, they need to use another invocation into heck. Wa being used by the, the Orc War Boss, so not a ton of units left for the Orcs. The Night Goblin Shaman's being hunted down by the Cryptors. Continued charges from the Blood Knights. More Cairn Wraiths moving in. More Grave Guard moving in. At this point, it is definitely trouble for the green skin, so really like the play by the vampire counts here. Um, using the lore of vampire as well, that invocation to heck, keeping his wizard alive, 
essentially wasting the magic um, from the green skin player who was shooting the missiles at him. And then kind of the vampires here, if you can't quickly destroy them, um, they don't, I mean, they don't break. So that's one of the most difficult things about dealing with the vampires in a late game scenario like this is they don't break. They just, they fight until they crumble. And um, if you can't get them to crumble quickly, then you take a significant amount of damage because they just don't run away. The Crypt Tour is here being used to push away regrouping units. So fantastic use. Vampire Lord staying well away from the fight where he should. 100, let's see, Blood Knights up to 60 kills. Or War Boss has 89. 144 on the Giants, so not bad. But the Giant is now gone, and it is over for the Greenskins. So really like the way this was played here. One Blood Knight, I think, was a cool choice. It's a great unit. It's very powerful. Spending more than that, like with two Blood Knights, then they get harder to manage. He was able to use the one Blood Knight very well. Uh, love seeing Grave Guard from the Vampires as well. I feel like they're an underused unit when people pretty much just throw Skeletons and Crypt Horrors out there. Karen Wraiths are always kind of a go-to unit because they ignore physical damage. And they can be very useful in tanking damage for the Vampires. Invocation in the Heck. I, I love it in the sense that I would imagine, like, if I were in a van uh, like a Warhammer lore, I'm assuming that, you know, that's the whole deal with the vampires, is they use magic to kind of keep their armies animated. So, Invocation of the Heck, to me, is a cool spell. Fits the vampires very well, and uh, helps make up for the fact that they don't have, like, skirmishers and other stuff like that. So they can, they can use that to kind of replenish key units at key times. Wah here being popped. Uh, Blood Knights making the rear charge. The Orc War Boss has certainly got to start to fade away here. He's still fighting, which is impressive, but he is gone. And the, uh, the Night Goblin Shaman being pummeled by Cryptors. That was a great game. Appreciate uh, Theocles there for sending it in, or Smokey in this case. Uh, really enjoyed the play with the Blood Knights, and I, I kind of was starting to write them off because they were getting so damaged, and I completely forgot about Invocation and the Hex, so felt like that was a really nice play. Uh, love the pick from the Greenskins for the most part. Like, I think the Giants were um, a fantastic pick, and you saw that. I mean, one of them definitely made some plays there. Uh, but if you look at the rest of the Greenskin army here, like I said, so the, the little Wa spent most of their time shooting at the Vampire Lord. Imagine if you would have brought the big Wa and a foot of Gork, for instance. Like, if you could go tie down some of those wraiths somewhere and smack them with the foot of Gork, that unit will be gone. The Vampires won't be able to heal it. There was um, several Wraith units left, or at least one Wraith unit left at the end of the battle. So that's a good way to take some power away from the Vampires. Unfortunately, um, Foot of Gork was pretty expensive as it is. It was quite expensive, actually. Um, and if we take a look uh, at what happened with it, though... So if we go into the Spell Browser and we pick the Big Wa... So Foot of Gork was already like 16 mana, now it's 18. It's freaking ridiculous, and it's a full-on 28 for the increased damage, and I don't even know if the increased damage has been buffed. I haven't tested this spell in a while, so I probably will and see if it's been changed, but that's the unfortunate thing. So Foot of Gork was a kind of, I mean, it wasn't, I mean, if it's not good versus all units now because of the, how much mana it costs, it's going to be garbage, uh, but previously it was definitely well used against ethereal units, uh, but I'll retest that and see if it's the same in this patch. Anyway, Eric Carthage signing out. Hope you all enjoyed it. I'll see you back soon.